Hey, welcome to 10 p.m. on Saturday. And I don't have a beer. This is a problem. I don't have a beer either. <laughs> um, and uh, you are here for the Mastodon and the Fediverse panel tonight. Um, uh, and all things Fediverse. Yeah. And um, thank the you. What? The Fediverse. Come on now. Keep it together, folks. Uh, my, my name is Bill Buddington. I work for the Electronic Frontier Foundation. I'm a technologist, a senior staff technologist at the EFF, uh, where we have, um, you know, over the past year or so, uh, really paid attention to the Fediverse very closely because something happened. I don't know what might have happened in the last year, but something happened that... I thought that, the internet's been out. <laughs> I'm going to cause a mass migration of users. I tripped over a power cord. <laughs> that was me. That's why I'm here is I tripped over the power cord. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I am Jim Nettles. I am probably going to be your punchy smartass for the night. Um, oh, shit. Um, I thought it was my role. <laughs> oh, we're screwed. Somebody needs to bring us beer. Um, or something else. All right. Look, you're talking the language. I'm in a kilt. Um, anyway. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. Talk shit. Get rewarded. You got to do this, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, don't have to convince me. You pour yourself. So, I'm Jim Nettles. Uh, stuff y'all don't care about. I write science fiction, urban fantasy, horror, contemporary, a whole bunch of shit. Um, I... What am I drinking? Ooh, yeah. nice. Very All nice right. PD scotch. You're not getting that back. Um, so nice I also scotch. write a lot of stuff in nonfiction, privacy, data security, technology, business entrepreneurship, a whole bunch of stuff in there as well I can't talk about. Um, I am, I by, by, thank you very kindly, sir. Um, by profession, I worked in technology for <laughs> decades. Um, and I have done, I mean, predominantly my career has been in fintech and in a lot of interesting different technologies. I am, I, you know, I am a partner in and own a good large chunk of a number of companies <laughs> in a lot of different spaces. I do a lot of consulting with um, VC firms. I do a lot of consulting with people looking for VC capital. Um, that's one of those things I don't talk about that often, but I do a lot of that work. Um, I have done a lot of projects over the years. I run a virtual network for writers, creatives, and everything else. Talking about creative process, we do a lot of that stuff in the, the usual suspects, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. Um, I have done a lot of things in interesting spaces, and I'm very, um, we've leveraged a lot of things like Mastodon, Fediverse, t technologies to help facilitate private communities things to go and help people in a lot of different spaces to make sure that they can create the communities they they want that they need and that they have control over and this is one of the main things that i am very much interested in and have dealt with there are some of those projects i can talk about there are some of those projects i cannot talk about especially on camera what are the nice things about the fediverse in general and uh and uh you know, uh, Activity Pub specifically is that it is a generalized web technology that allows a lot of the federated uh, services that we've all come to know and love. Mastodon, only one of them. Uh, and, uh, you know, Instagram alternatives and etc. And Activity Pub is a versatile technology that allows us to publish uh, multimedia um, within uh, the, the you know a, a kind of a multiverse of different services that uh, that uh, we control, and it's an open service, and it's, a, it's something that has been consensed upon by the web community. Uh, Activity Pub uh, itself. You know, an ITF standard has been consensed upon uh, over time and now um, is the backbone of so many of the services that we've come to know and love. Um, and, God, I, 
okay, I am an old Mastodon not social uh, user, and that's what I use for Mastodon. But I've been so tempted to just ditch it and join a oh, there's like a a awesome D and D little community over here, uh, and I would love to fucking join that. Um, and, and you know, but then again, my brain is drawn to like this other thing. And what is cool? What I really got excited about Mastodon originally is this small community feel about it. Is that hey, there are people with my own interests over here, and they can and and based on my own proclivities I like can choose to associate with this one community and then if I trust the moderators on that community and the whole guidelines of that community and the social mores of that community then uh, it'll end up okay and I think that that's something that we have over time found not to be true for the large social media uh, platforms that the the unfortunately in our society the center is not is no longer there um, the center uh, of what we see the center of the political center is is mm, not so much there as much as it was and we have to rely on those that we trust, those that we really, you know, trust and and love in the communities that we associate with. I mean, honestly, this is a great example. I mean, DragonCon in itself is a great example of, and I, I would love to see DragonCon set up its own Mastodon service because Grab the door. I feel like this community and the sense of trust and love that I feel just walking around these halls um, is real and super inclusive and awesome and I feel like that is what makes and embodies a Mastodon service in general is you want to have that sense of inclusiveness and 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 you know and the moderators of a particular Mastodon server will choose what is not acceptable and based on their own criteria and and uh, uh, we've seen that, that that kind of you know uh, hey this is this is like not what we want to include you can choose to associate with anyone else that that kind of federated um, service uh, federated uh, federated uh, 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 moderation uh, dynamic is really apparent in in uh, the way that we use the Fediverse. So I'm going to, so one of the things you're going to probably hear me say a lot tonight is I'm a contrarian. I frequently, the last, the, the best term I have that I'm going to use since we're at Dragon Con is Great Jedi, right? I am a firm believer in doing the right thing when you need to and take the hit when you need to. I am very much a firm believer in a lot of things. Most of all, the freedom of expression, the freedom of communication, the freedom to build community, to find people that build healthy. I hate the term safe because I don't believe there is such a thing as a safe space. Everything in life has risk. Um, Scott's over here wincing. I don't even have to look to know because, again, I've kind of been Debbie Downer a couple of times today. But here's the beautiful thing I see about the Fediverse. This is part of the thing about open source. I've worked for a lot of different entities. I have spent a lot of time in everything from startups to Fortune 50s. I have seen things in a multitude of environments, political, corporate, everything else. We often look at some of these some of these tools, technologies as fun toys. And they are, right? 
I mean, the ability to go masses on server, build friends. I'm going to go back to about 1993. Buddy of mine and I built kind of a little private, little listserv group, web page that was all about posting obnoxious shit. Since it's late at night, y'all are just stuck with what you're going to get. We, you know, and it was all about who can find the weirdest thing, the most obnoxious thing. The, you know, we, we had fun with it. It was kind of the old listserv kind of stuff, going back to BBS days, things like that. When we look at tools and technologies like Mastodon, like the Fediverse, like these open source technologies, here's the reason that those are important. Corporate media technologies are not our friend. We can leverage them. We can use them. We should do so with intention or not do so with intention. Tools like this give us the ability to build our communities with our rules and do the things that we need to do in a relatively, and I want to, want to emphasize this, relatively safe and secure environment. Um, earlier today, one of the panels we were on, we were talking about a lot of the things going on, Arab Spring, the ability to do communication and use social media networks. And I'm like, if you think you're going to use an open, you know, something like Twitter or Facebook and there's not ramifications, this is like anything else. When you do something revolutionary and you lose, that is bad for you. When you do something revolutionary and you use and you've used technologies to highlight who the hell did it, you're going to have a bad day. I've been in some countries, I've been in some places, I've worked in some places where that bad day is really, really bad. So there's a lot of fun to working with these tools and technologies, right? We can go build the group that is our community, our friends, our people, our gamer group niche communities that create family you may never meet in person but you can create family if it's activism you need to do you have a tool and a technology where you have the ability to safely and securely control who's in there what you see what you don't play by your rules right at the same time it's one of those things where it's not necessarily as easy all right, we're all old geeks in here, right? It's Saturday night. The party's out there, and we're in here. That means this is important. We like playing with the tools. We like playing with the technologies. We like geeking out. We're, you know, It'll be 4 a.m. on a Saturday night, and we're still trying to figure out a little bit of code or some little fun something, right? But what's important is when we have those skill sets, the communities we can leverage that to to help. I am a firm believer in having a life of service, right? Whether it's I'm teaching people how to do business, whether I'm being a smart ass about writing books, whether I'm being a smart ass about gaming stuff, or whether or not I'm in talking about human trafficking. And creating environments where people that are being trafficked have an ability to communicate that they need help. These are the important things about these tools and the fact that everyone sitting in this room because you have an interest means that you can build the community whether it's going to have fun it's your neighborhood group it's your neighborhood community it's the i want to build a community to protect my writing group right i run a big network a couple of thousand you know we're i don't know we're pushing maybe three thousand people of writers and fans and stuff like this we get them to connect in very public ways working on a Mastodon server because I don't like playing on anybody else's uh, real estate and relying on somebody else's real estate. I have a lot of corporate clients. We are building real estate for them in these kind of spaces. We see social media companies, platforms, entities coming out here and they are not working necessarily in our best interests. They are not working in anyone else's interest but their own. We just have to look at them as tools, toys, and annoyances to leverage to help us. The reason everybody's in here is because you have an interest in the ability to create the place where you can set the rules, you can create the community, and you can do what you need to or what you want to. And I want to, you know, that can be nothing but fun and entertainment. 
or it can mean something that means the difference in people's lives. Okay, soapbox over. <laughs> Musk does. I I will tell you this. I, there's a lot of hate for Musk. I have. I have issues with Musk. I have a great deal of respect for Musk. There are a lot of projects that he has done. The Zuck, on the other hand, another story. Um, if you want to give hate for the, for Musk, he's earned plenty of it, but there's plenty of places where he has done a lot of work that helps support a lot of issues and provided a lot of space for a lot of projects. How Not, many of you uh, participated in IRC, uh, Internet Relay Chat, back in the day? Oh, you nice. mean buggy code? <laughs> Lots of hands. That's great. And that is the community feeling that you get from yeah. Mastodon. I think that that's something that really attracts people that are interested in forming their own subjectivities, their own rules, their own communities, and... and free play with those that may or may not agree with them and this kind of dynamic of okay here as a community that i i'm affiliated with or i may be which is really powerful a community of one if i'm able to run my own Mastodon service and uh how much that aligns with or doesn't align with truth.social down, down the corner over there. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, they federate with no one, apparently. Um, you know, uh, it, the the whole ability to create, you know, a, a network based on um, large, you know, federative process. Federative process. Uh, as long as you're better than the guys I had in the hotel the other night that mm -hmm. were wearing full red shirt Starfleet uniforms that said, can you push floor so-and-so? And I'm like, no, you want deck eight. <laughs> I, you know, I feel like, you know, this, this kind of uh, ability to mish and mash with some other others and play and play with others even though you might not have the exact same rules as others, is the powerful dynamic of the Fediverse. And you, if something, if, if, if you know, this large, you know, uh, dynamic of uh, other servers chooses that, or even a subset of that chooses not to affiliate with, uh, you know, one server because of their own moderation policies maybe it's a too controversial maybe the content moderation policies are different from those that you know whatever then you can do that and that i feel is a is the most powerful asset of the Fediverse because it is up to the subjectivity of those that you trust and that in and of itself allows you to choose your own moderators and choose what exactly content you want to see not only on the server level but on the individual level of course you know uh mastodon has the same kind of blocking technology as any you know twitter does or whatever but um but also you can say hey i'm going to report this malicious user to my own server and my own server can choose to uh, take that with, you know, take, take that uh, malicious user on another server uh, and say, hey, is this a pattern for that instance of Mastodon that, I federate, that we federate with? Or is it a uh, aberrant user of that? specific service and based on that can block either that one user for all of its Mastodon's uh, users or or you know in the entirety of that server and defederate that's uh, I feel like that's a powerful uh, enough uh, incentive because it really allows you to associate to to, to have this powerful power of of, of free association 
of choosing who, based on you, you want to associate with. And that, that in and of itself is, uh, is, is uh, enough for me to want to use it, at least. So let me ask a couple questions, because we want to focus this on what you guys want, right? We're all here at 10-something. Um, how many of you have never used Mastodon or another federated service? Never used it. How many of you have used it? How many of you are hosting a server? That, the numbers about work right work out yeah. about right. Yeah. So I'm going to ask for those of you guys that are on Mastodon, who's been on it for more than a year? Ballpark, right? So, in other words, we saw social movements come about, technological movements come about that brought people to go and say, I'm going over there. So, here's the question. I'm going to ask you guys. Just kind of yell them out. What took you to Mastodon? Whether it was from another platform, you said, what's a Mastodon? And I want to go see something with Horny with Tusks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can you come to the mic? Yeah, can you? Yeah, you sh you should be in charge. I was just saying, I want to show you the Uh, I just wanted to be able to help shape what I was doing, have some control over it. Whereas all the corporate controlled social media, they have their own plan probably doesn't in any way intersect with what I want and I have no say in what they do uh, even less say with like Musk currently he's definitely got his own plan absolutely whereas Mastodon offers a little more of an egalitarian idea of can you contribute can you do something can you make suggestions can you help test can you write documentation any of those sort of things can help push it in one direction or the other like uh, right now account portability is bad you can't really move between servers easily they advertise it but it's just doesn't work right and that's an area I want I want it to be fully under your control where you even if your server goes away you can move somewhere else all your posts go with you everything goes with you and there are a lot of people who want that sort of thing but you'd never get that on a corporate network yeah. And plus, uh, <laughs> dovetailing off of that, it's like, oh, I moved off of a corporate network where it's a uh, corporate interest. I suddenly have no ads. What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the corresponding side of that is you have to be willing to support that network. Like yep. You need to yep. kick in money to your server. You need, if you're not mm -hmm. being shown ads, you got to do something to keep it running. Patreon. Go to your server, your individual servers, uh, uh, about about and kick in some money. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even have to be. It it only has to be you know the price of um, what you would do for tips for a cup of coffee per month, and that makes a big difference. Okay, we're in trouble now. Dad's at the mic. <laughs> <laughs> so I took a quick look at Mastodon, and it's very interesting, but the. The, the perfect community that I really want to see doesn't exist. So what do I do? So you want your perfect community, right? Go build your server and start building that perfect community. Set the rules, set the play, set the ground rules. Invite the people that make your utopia or your personal hell, whatever makes you happy. Um, here's, the, here's what I think is the one of the biggest benefits 
to working with like a to going with Mastodon. I do not think it is the. I think it's a good starting source as a platform. I think something is going to replace it as a good open source next step, right? This is the problem we've got is what are the biggest problems with Mastodon? Portability. Um, finding your communities. There's a cost factor. Um, and then the effort to go and moderate. There's another one that brings me a great deal of concern. And this is the one that says, what happens if governmental entities... Can somebody grab the door? Sure. Um, what happens if governmental entities, let's say a Section 230 changes and says, if you have your own server, you're responsible for that content, and if somebody does something untoward, you're responsible because it's your server. We know no government would ever do something like put in controls to say, repress people, repress movements, repress society, repress technologies. We know no one would ever do that at all. Yes, go. There's already something about this that's in place now, and that is, I have heard that a new Methodon server can, administrator can save themselves a lot of trouble by designating a, a, a someone to handle DMCA requests. Hmm. Uh, it, it's something that big networks have to worry about, but if you run your own server, you may have to worry about it yourself. Yeah, you are correct. We have a winner because what I, what I win? you have won the right to go get us another drink. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, so when we when we look at platforms like this, when we look at the importance of them. Again, it's, it's a question of value and who's going to do the work, right? How many of you guys work in tech? Gee, this is shocking. How many of you guys do not? So how many of you guys that do not work in tech are kind of perplexed by what we're even talking about? Perfect. We're here to pontificate. So, here's the, here's the thing I will say. Is that there's a learning curve, right? It's not necessarily easy, but it's not hard. Um, one of the good things I'll say that's good is there's a lot of data services that are popping up that are there to help make it easy to host your own Mastodon server. Are they doing it from a profit motive? Absolutely. Why then would I be concerned about some of these companies doing things like that for profit to stand up? Hey, we're doing, here's your database, click a button, you have a Mastodon server. Why would I be concerned about that? It's not yours. Not my real estate. You don't know how it's built. I don't know how it's built. I don't know who's looking. I don't know who's watching. So the things I went to Mastodon for, I don't know. I don't like not to know. I'm kind of an ass about that. Okay, I'm an ass about a lot of things. But <laughs> I, I want to know because if I'm doing something like this, I, I, you know, I want control. Some things I don't care about. If I'm building something for a writer community, a reader community, a fan community, I'm building something around something corporate, something business, but I'm creating a place that we can set the rules. I don't care. However, if something is being built where lives and reputations are at stake. I want control. I want to be able to maximize my level of security and control as much as I can. Here's the fun part. If it's online and it's digital, there's no such thing as 100% security. I don't care what level of encryption you go with. I don't care what kind of level of security you go with. You can only take the reasonable level of actions to control what you can control. Okay. One of the uh, you know important uh, or annoying parts of Mastodon is that there is no end-to-end -end encryption uh, in digital in uh, direct messaging, and uh, what is the inoculation against um, some lack of a feature? Well, that is developing a new feature, and if you are on Twitter, how do you? ensure that a new feature is developed. Anyone? 
yeah, you you beg to the proprietors of the platform, oh, I would like this new feature. Please, please implement it. That's not the way that Mastodon works. Mastodon is an open source platform. And if you want to have a feature, then the will to have that new feature, uh, especially among open source developers, is to build it themselves. And once it is a good and salient feature that people want, then they can actually have it implemented um, because there is a general will for that feature. And, uh, you know, it, you have an end-to-end uh, -end encryption that actually protects communications between two users, then that is something that a individual server can build out or uh, a developer who wants to contribute to the Mastodon ecosystem can build out. And then you will have true, much more private than Twitter, communications happening within the Mastodon ecosystem. And that is a truly powerful and truly private uh, feature that could be built out by developers. Um, so, so you know, um, the great thing about, you know, one of the many great things about Mastodon is that you can have a feature developed simply because there's a will to develop it amongst those that are, that are, that are interested in the platform. Or bribe your favorite geek. When you take liquor. Yeah. Well, the, go to chat GPT, ask it to write the code, plug <laughs> I mean, This is why we have, you know. This is why I'm not allowed in public. Uh, this is why we have uh, audits of software in general. Uh, you know, the, we have like a, 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 I worked on SecureDrop, and SecureDrop is a platform which um, is. Uh, intended to make sure that if there are uh, if there are uh, you know uh, if, if there's a whistleblower that wants to get secrets out from a specific uh, entity then they can do so in a secure and and truly private manner and you know if that's not going to happen uh, you know unless they actually trust the software and the uh, trust that's embedded in software is solely um, going to come from uh, actually having it audited by security researchers and security auditors. So my point is, yeah. the, this is like the best way to get question answered as well. Come to the, come to the mic. Um, mm -hmm. act, no, well, okay. My, We're my gonna point isn't so much to just... Uh, is, is that if you don't have time to write it yourself, write it poorly yourself and then show it to somebody that knows what they're doing and then get out of the way. Mm. Because they will immediately tear it apart and yeah. be horrified by it and, yeah. and fix it. Yeah. The, uh, Welcome the, to being a writer. Yeah. <laughs> Tell the internet the wrong answer. Wait. Yeah. I, I don't think that um, open source software operates quite as optimally as those who promote it would wish that it did, but I think that it operates a lot better than simply having a black box that you trust in order to do so. Yeah, I'd like to see everybody who's got questions. Let's line up, because, I mean, we want to make this conversation, right? This is not about us pontificating. This Let's talk about what we can talk about. Uh, federalism is an excellent brand for the world's oldest federal representative democracy, but is this Mastodon system not more anarchic? I'm not an anarchist, but there's not a central authority, so it's anarchy, not federalism, right? Indeed. Mm. Yes. Okay. I'm going to, just because it's, you know, this is my job in life. I'm here to be the contrarian pain in the ass. I got to be good for something. I'm not sure what it is. So the answer is it depends on who is moderating their server. I have a good friend who is a full-blown anarchist. He says. He really isn't. But he likes to think he is. He's a writer. I mean, we're all lazy. Um, so it depends on what level of work and control we're willing to put into place. And the biggest limiting factor is often the fact that we're too damn lazy to actually do the moderation or do the things to grow the community. 
So, an ar- uh, you know, two anarchists, can they cause trouble? Sure. Two anarchists online, we called that flame wars back in when I'm in my childhood. We poke fun at them. Okay, I'm cold, heartless, old, tired. And if you want, you know, it, it's work to build a community. If you're going to build a community, are you not going to sustain it? Are you not going to take care of it? Are you not going to make the rules that make it a healthy community? Some people don't. You know what happens to those communities? Um, what, what was it, what was that movie from the eighties? The um, oh yeah, the the Outsiders. Um, you start snapping fingers, have a dance number online, and the server collapses. One of the main principles of anarchism is free association, and that is exactly what the Fediverse embodies. Uh, the free association of those that choose to trust um, and voluntarily choose to trust representatives of their own interests to to disassociate with those that they don't trust. And I feel like that is a very anarchic principle. I mean, I won't even let my own wife on my own server. I don't let anybody else on it because so, that way I can't get in trouble. <laughs> hey, I have a quick question. So... Uh, I'm a vulnerability guy, so the CIA triad is everything to me. What do you think? I, I don't know anything about the team that puts this out. The, what do you think the um, vulnerability patching cycle is and stuff like that? I mean, are they? It's not a. It's not like a Patch Tuesday Microsoft kind of thing. It's a right. uh, continuous thing, though. Uh, I'm sure that they're with any server. There's often um, okay. I'm sure there's like for you know Mastodon, there's going to be uh, Docker instances which run your uh, which will run, run your Mastodon server. Um, that is not going to be updated unless you update that Docker image for a Mastodon service. So it is up to the run, like those that run a server to ensure that it is has been patched up to the latest security updates for that instance it is not going to and and that means that like and, you know the great thing about a, feder, a federative uh, instance is like okay if you're communicating with uh, an instance that knows about a vulnerability then they may be able to stop that vulnerability from propagating to their own server if they themselves have upgraded instead of you know, uh, you know that 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 service that you're talking about is going to be some. You know, it's going to be a, a process which is, in many ways, like the human inoculative process. Um, if you have uh, some vulnerability that spreads to another server, if that server is inoculated against it, then it, it will not actually take hold uh and so um it is up to the individual servers to ensure that they are up to the latest security patches and and the thing i would add is in some cases this is an argument for if you're lazy um or you're not knowledgeable you don't have the time the skill sets the community to do it this is when you can if you find a trusted service to host it they can handle some of those things for you in the back end um because again i you know much of my life is about risk and risk management it's about control it's about security evaluation it's about risk evaluation if you know if you're somebody like me where you know you're spread thin as hell but this is important but you don't want to deal with the ops shit either you got somebody that does the ops for you or you pay somebody to do it if you are a control freak like me um then you go and say i'm blocking out the time to make sure i do the patches and things but we have to remember this is open source which means we don't necessarily always have the funding and the controls we have to rely on the community as a whole to plug the holes or do it yourself What do you see as the major challenges that need to be solved for the Fediverse to grow by, say, tenfold, by a hundredfold, by a thousandfold? 
what what's in the way what what has to get fixed you know i i think that that's i don't think that mass adaptation happens unless there is a larger yeah Your uh, seismic yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you know, process that is un- that is underlying it. And I think that uh, if people are comfortable using Twitter, then they will use Twitter. Unless they're com- uncomfortable using Twitter, and then, uh, well, uh, actually, that happened last year, huh? Um, and people started to there, there was that seismic uh, 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 unfolding, and people switched to another platform. I think that that is. I think that rather than say. What will cause people to to you know move and migrate to? I think that the better question is to 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 you know make sure that there is an alternative that is viable and salient and people want to use one once that centralized platform does something that's stupid, and that's always going to happen. The centralized platforms are always going to do something that's stupid eventually, and that the the ability for us to create alternatives is all of our own making. So again, this might be a shocker. I'm going to be contrarian. The number one challenge is usability, because the vast majority of the population does not know does not care and they have zero sense of privacy we're sitting on the EFF truck part of the drive of the foundation is ideas of privacy security identity responsibility tell me how many people on Facebook really give a shit about being responsible I'm not even going to mention the platform formerly known as Twitter I mean, it was a shit show before. It's a shit show now. (laughs) Sorry, Scott. (laughs) I mean, this is the thing. If we're worried about the identity of who's driving the bus, I can assure you if you spend an hour with me and tell me everybody you do business with, I'm going to probably make every one of you paranoid. If you trust commercial platforms... Spend about 12 minutes with me and I'll make every damn one of you paranoid. We focus on what draws ire and what draws that whole sort of collective. I'm going to go yell about this billionaire versus that billionaire versus this versus that versus whatever. They're all corporate entities. They all are driving revenues for companies. That's what they care about is the revenues. I didn't say they cared about their users. I didn't say they care about the governments they're, they're, that they in the world in the com- countries they operate in. I didn't say that they give two shits about the users. They do not care necessarily about the governments, the countries, the the population, the people. That's not the focus. The focus is you are the product. The problem, or not problem, but the thing is, commercial platforms are successful because they try to make it easy they give utility and they provide resources that are fast easy and are apparent at no apparent cost to them as users the biggest obstacle to me is creating platforms i mean i every time for a long time every time a new social media platform popped up i'd beta it i'd review it i'd go in and evaluate it and then i'd watch them die why because every one of them that came up and said we're doing this we're not running ads we're not doing anything else then where are you generating your revenues to how to pay your people and security and servers and data and da 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 and then you watch them trail off and die quickly that's the problem this is not free to do it takes time it takes skills it takes knowledge it takes resources that's the obstacle is creating something that is easy to use and for the vast majority of users they're not paying for it so they'll come and play with it mastodon is not an easy environment to go play in 
if you're a Facebook user and you're used to, oh, Facebook is going to tell me I need to go belong to the, you know, the Pokemon Knitters of Cincinnati. I don't know if that's real. I have no idea, and I have no idea where that just came from. But it could be real. And it's one of those things of, it goes and says, oh, you're in Cincinnati? You like Pokemon? You like Cincinnati? You're a knitter? You're in all three of these pools, so we're going to say, hey, try this group. Astanon doesn't do that. You have to go find and build your community. You have to encourage people to do things that are not as user-friendly. You have to do things that are not as easy to use, easy to facilitate, and don't have all the functionality. Most people are lazy. Most people want it easy, shiny, and let me go play with the toys and reach a big audience. That is not what we're talking about here as a platform. Did I just go Captain Buzzkill again? Please. Oh, Captain Buzzkill is uh, 11 o'clock uh, p.m. attitude. <laughs> That's fun. How's it going? Hey, uh, first, I want to agree with James that I think that Mastodon is a stepping stone to the next greater platform. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, what we can learn about um, the failings of Mastodon being mass adopted, I think fr from what I can see, one of the big problems with uh, getting users to actually start using Mastodon is that they have to create a separate account for every platform. And sure, you can move... Um, followers between platforms uh, because it has a file sharing system between different accounts. I think uh, maybe we're pushing too forward in decentralizing social media. Maybe just the moderation should be decentralized and the actual account creation should be just one account gives you access to various different uh, communities. Well, that's, that's the case in Mastodon. You, you're able to follow anyone throughout the Fediverse. Uh, as long you, as you follow the rules. You are, but um, because there's no algorithms uh, sending you to different places, like James said, uh, mm -hmm. the, your main portal to seeing different accounts is going to be through the community section on an individual server. Cool. Yeah, or, or your own social uh, you know, proclivities from the other platforms or uh, the fact that you know this infosec user from infosec.social or uh, I mean I think there are various ways that you can discover new users uh, it's all a matter of uh, whether you uh, are federating uh, that that service federating with them and, and generally if they are known to be on the federalist they are uh, I, I agree so, with that yeah. I, I just think um, it, it pushes you outside of the it pushes the user outside of the central system, the hub of each individual server. They have to go outside the server to find different servers, different communities, uh, mm -hmm. instead of uh, being able to find them from so, the same server. So if I can be the contrarian, um, here's my argument. Do we really want it to be easier? Here's the reason I ask that. When I recommend people use Mastodon, create communities, I actually recommend you build it because you don't want it easy to find. You want it to be found by the right people, which means, again, you're doing a little bit of the work. You're going out and using the corporate social media platforms. You're using meeting people, oh, my God, in person. Okay, I know it has to happen once a year at DragonCon. We have to actually crawl out of the cave and say hi. But um, I think that there is great value. Where, where I see much of the great value is in that personal connection and inviting people into your space. If you have people that find it and stumble onto it, great. I see that this is the answer to corporatist algorithmically driven social media and being real connection. I So this is why I actually don't necessarily think that the answer is grow it huge. I think it's go and make the real interpersonal connections, create real bonds, and make this is the place that your community can thrive 
and to hell with everyone else. Yeah, adaptation is not always the mass adaptation is not always the answer. Uh, the answer is often genuine adaptation, mm-hmm. feeling like this is a platform where you want to be and you want to stay, and that's often more valuable than just having a mass reach. I agree with that. I mean, I, because again, if you ultimately if you get enough mass adoption, it will become a corporate platform. Uh, well, it, isn't that where the decentralization of the servers comes into play, where you could keep community communities disparate? When Which is the reason there's not the corporate incentivization to then build all the functionality, tools, technologies. Either A, it's going to stay small because you disincentivize somebody wanting to buy it. Or you grow it in a way that someone is ultimately incentivized to take over the system. I, I just don't see why the whole system has to be um, indispersable, where the whole thing is either uh, completely centralized or completely decentralized. Uh, I don't see why we can't have uh, community aspects decentralized and um, accounting information centralized. Well, you know, for in, right. it's not completely decentralized in the right. first place because uh, Mastodon, you have server moderators and those that aren't able to run their own servers uh, are not able to just, uh, you know, uh, spin out their own moderation policies and, and adopt them. So the, there is a certain level of decentralized centralization that happens within Mastodon too. Um, it, it's just kind of okay who are the techies that are able to run a server that you know and trust and trust their own judgment on who you want to actually associate with and i think that's good and bad you know there there might be a um, hierarchical relationship with which which happens within that that where you know um uh perhaps um um those that are able to run servers inherently are um, not uh, who you want to run servers. Um, That's completely possible, and I don't discount that. But I feel like um, it is much better than uh, one centralized (laughs) ring to rule them all. Um, The model I would be more inclined to see is a centralized hub where platforms can, can... I hate to use the term advertise, but I'm going to use that. Inform people that their server exists. Here's my policies. Here's the purpose of what we're doing to simplify a lot of the search effort. But the second you start centralizing money, there's a potential risk. All right. What other questions we got? I'll just uh, jump in here. So one, one reason why you wouldn't want to have a centralized account server is because of the se- one reason why you wouldn't want to have a centralized account server is for privacy. Someone was mentioning here earlier. And one of the advantages of decentralization is that you can have your information spread out instead of a one centralized location, which can be either hacked or through warrants or subpoenas. That's where the government will go to get that. And also can be a, a point for, for potential uh, actions for like cutting off an account. So having a centralized account takes away some of the advantages of a decentralized system. If we want privacy and security, then we want privacy and security and we have to do the work for that. If we want commercial resources, we have to go for that. There's a point at which the twain shall not meet. That goes to my point. If, if there was a central authority for accounts, that would be a federal system because there would be an overarching authority over the other servers, but it's anarchic because there is no overarching authority. Then who, who's paying for that? When they're using the term federated, they're using it in a different sense from a federal government. Mm-hmm. So in the sense that like a federated system is when the network speaks to one another, different aspects of the network, and not a federal central authority with states and provinces and like in a, in a federal system. So I think it's, it's using the term in a little bit of a different way. Yes, we're building fiefdoms. <laughs> but I think it's a distinction with a difference. Sure. 
we, we can talk about the difference in the technical language and the social language, but the two, again, are very different. I want to agree with you on usability being a major problem, and I think it comes back to a lot of Mastodon, at least the older Mastodon, is a bunch of people who act like they are upset their favorite band got big. They don't want it to change. They don't want it to evolve. They want to keep it stagnant because they like the way it is. And it... Get it's, off my lawn. Exactly. Uh, and the interesting part is we have this event that theoretically is happening with threads potentially joining mastodon freaking out about this but we have a chance where a truly open network can communicate openly with a commercial network you can leave the commercial side for the easy to use wanting public but they can still reach out to get to people who don't want that and you can do the vice versa it's just getting everyone to accept this is a possibility and that it might work rather than well it can't be perfect so we can't allow it to happen if one person acts up we're going to shut off communication we're going to defederate that server and it ignores the reality of if you have a hundred million people on a service the chances of one percent acting up pretty darn high but I think so, that's acknowledged too. Yeah. You know, the fact that um, you have large uh, servers which are valuable to the mass user base of your users uh, is is something that um, your server administrators at least will hopefully acknowledge too. And and if they don't, then you can pick up and leave and and go to your own to to more competent server administrators, which is also where the account portability stuff comes in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but we want it to be big, but we don't want it to be big. We want the community. We want everybody to be able to join, except for him. And I, I'm that usually that him. Let's be honest. Um, yes, sir, Mike. I think we're going to uh, cut it off after that, as it is yeah. 11. I've been thrown out of better places, and I've run... Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, I found a... Well, I just pointed to an uh, interesting article. You'll have to Google it yourself. That put the... The, uh, the, the language they used was they put that... Mastodon sort of has two different components to it. There's the, the original small communities aspect... And there's the more recent Twitter 2.0 aspect. And the two are n sort of naturally at odds. And uh, like uh, the creator of Methodon is considering adding opt-in search. You know, some people are opposed to that even. Uh, so, uh, that's the, uh, I mean, in one sense, if Methodon... Uh, quote unquote fails, it hasn't really failed because it'll still be there for the original people. It'll just be a lot smaller and no one will, will talk about it. Um, let's see, I, I guess I don't really have a point, I just sort of wanted to <laughs> the, the technical challenges that are um, inherent in the text search um, are real because every if you want to be able to do a text search across the Fediverse, uh, in, well, across the Meta Mastodon Fediverse at least, then every server will have to have an index of uh, text within the entire Fediverse. And so that is a real challenge. That's why hashtags are kind of the way that people search for uh, interests within the Fediverse uh, because you can't practically have um, an index across the Fediverse for every single in, you know instance. Um, Unless you're Google. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And and so that's that is a, that is like a not 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 just a, a a policy but also a technical problem in itself. And uh, and I think that that you know is real, but it's also makes it so that. Those that um, want to dox people and want to harass people based on the terminology that they use uh, can e as easily do so. Um, you know, uh, I think that is an advantage as well. Um, 
you know, if you if you want to be found, then you you know have to use a hashtag in order to be found, and you, that uh, adds a level of uh, uh, consent to the posts that you are are posting, and so I think that that that, that is something that is both. Mm, a growing a, a a growing pain because it is not like Twitter, but also an advantage because you can consent to you, you can you can actively promote this this being a thing that is viral based on you know having it be a hashtag uh, that is associated with it, and you don't have to. Um, uh, have it be viral if you do, if you only want your followers to be able to uh, view it or your local community to be able to view it. The the one all right. So the one thing I'm going to add on top of that is it's a tool. Use the tools for what they're appropriate for. And when there's opportunity in things like the open source space to help build, refine build new functionality, build new capabilities, new use cases. Support them. That's the entire point of the open source community. No, go ahead. Last question. You're nicer I, than I am. Oh, wait, I, that I, take much. I can actually comment a bit on, on search because I've written a text search patch for my own Mastodon server and, oh. and use it you know, somewhat regularly it was not difficult to do it can search anything that the server has seen obviously not mm -hmm. the entire fediverse it's not attempting to be a a, a search spider um, and a number of other servers are running full text search you know without the default mastodon restrictions on it and that's just the nature of a federated system you can't control what someone else's server does with data that you have caused to be sent to it and i think there are some misunderstandings out there or, or perhaps some unrealistic expectations that, that people might have on that front. Yeah, I think that's uh, maybe prohibitively expensive in the future if uh, Mastodon succeeds in the way that we perhaps want it to. Um, the content that's generated, um, uh, the amount of content that's generated may be unwieldy in the amount uh, that, it, that it is searchable and that may or may not be a desirable property. We'll see. And that's how just how the ecosystem evolves. I think that uh, we are wrapping it up. Scott wants to go to bed. <laughs> see, normally I get that fun 11.30 and I keep Scott up till 1.30 or 2 in the morning. He's going, please, God, just shut up. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for coming out tonight. Um, you know, I think it's been a fun conversation. I hope you guys got something out of it. Please sort of rate it in the app. Tell us what you got, what you didn't get. Um, hopefully you guys got something out of this for staying with us for this long a period of time. Um, and thank you for supporting the program. Thank you. Also, Thanks do so not much. forget to support our charity. Woo! Do not make me hold you by the ankles. Unless that's what you're into. So, <laughs> appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Take care now. And if 